cosmos in most cases means the world, but the word is generally used to denote an orderly and harmonious universe. This word was used for the first time by Pythagoras in the 6th century BC. Cosmos in astronomy is defined as the entire physical world as a single whole. The word cosmos is derived from the Greek word cosmos, which means orderly and harmonious. Mankind has always sought to discover the universe and solve its wonderful phenomena. The world we live in is very big and limitless. Man lives only in a very small part of the world, but he has always been aware of the existence of other worlds and galaxies in the world and cosmos. In general, the words cosmos and world refer to the same idea as the world of nature, but the cosmos refers to a wider and more complex system. But the question we are looking for an answer to is what is the main difference between the world and the cosmos and whether these two words can be used interchangeably. Cosmos and world are two separate concepts and have differences from each other. The cosmos is a perfectly ordered and harmonious system governed by natural law, but the universe is all there is, like space and time. The word cosmos is derived from the Greek word cosmos meaning orderly and harmonious, but the world comes from the Greek word universus meaning whole. The cosmos describes an orderly collection governed by natural law, and man has no involvement in guiding it. The concept of cosmos is used to refer to natural objects, especially celestial bodies. Pythagoras was the first to use the word cosmos for his philosophical religious perspective. The concept of the universe was first developed by the ancient Greeks. The cosmos is defined as everything, such as matter and energy, the earth, galaxies, stars, and meteors. It contains the following elements. Space. Time. You is not. A matter. Energy. The world is made up of three elements namely space, time and void. How is the universe formed? The first question that arises about the universe is how it came into being. How were the stars, galaxies, sky, earth, air and everything we see around us created? The universe consists of billions of stars and galaxies. The age of the universe is estimated to be around 13 billion years and its size is so large that it does not fit in the limited human mind. In the beginning, the universe was small enough to fit in the palm of your hand. The interesting thing is that everything we know and don't know was created from this small universe. Galaxies that have been photographed many times by telescopes such as Hubble and James Webb. The stars we see in the sky every night. The water we drink every day. Atoms that make up matter. Different elements of the periodic table. Everything we see and use around us. But after billions of years, the universe has become a very different place. In this episode, we will talk about the birth of the universe. Everything we see around us is made of atoms and molecules. Consider the 1956 Ford automobile. This car is made of different materials such as steel, rubber and glass. Car components are made from a combination of elements such as iron, silicon, chromium and carbon. Every atom of this car was created by the universe. A physicist named Lawrence Krauss studies how atoms are formed. According to the findings of this physicist, the core of the stars is the origin of most of the atoms that make up the human body, but some of them have existed since the first seconds after the Big Bang. Therefore, we are definitely cosmic people. Billions of years have passed since the creation of each atom. Let's go back to the car example. Each of its constituent atoms comes from stellar explosions, supernova processes, and stellar evolution. To understand how all the raw materials on Earth came into being, we need to travel back billions of years to the moment of the creation of the universe. In the beginning there was nothing, neither time nor space. Suddenly, a bright spot with a very high temperature appeared. Space was inside this fireball with high temperature. This point is considered the beginning of time. At this point, the cosmic clock started and the expansion of space began. It is important to note that the size of the initial luminous spot was even smaller than the size of a single atom. The theory of the creation of the universe from a very small point of light with high temperature was proposed by the American astronomer Edwin Hubble. In the years between 1920 and 1930, most astronomers believe that everything visible in the night sky was part of the Milky Way. But this theory did not convince Hubble and encouraged him to do more research. He studied a rotating luminous cloud called the Andromeda Nebula. 
The results of his studies on the Andromeda Nebula showed that this nebula is the home of many stars and is located in a galaxy outside the Milky Way and at a great distance from it. He also showed that other galaxies are rapidly moving away from our galaxy. The farther a galaxy is from us, the faster it moves. Hence, Hubble showed that the universe is expanding. What are the initial stages of the formation of the universe? So far, we know what Hubble's law is and its role in the expansion of the universe. Next, we will talk about the moments after the Big Bang and the beginning of the universe. Hubble concluded that the universe is steadily expanding. Therefore, the size of the universe was smaller in the distant past and this is where the Big Bang Theory was born. The Big Bang Theory does not say anything about the beginning of the universe, but rather how it evolved. No one knows exactly what happened during the Big Bang. But, scientists know for sure that in the first moments after the birth of the universe, the little ball of fire started to grow. In the first moments after the Big Bang, the universe was as small as a glass marble and very unstable and it expanded in an unimaginable leap. During this very rapid expansion, space expanded faster than the speed of light. To have a better understanding of the expansion of the universe at the moment of birth, it has been likened to the expansion of a hot glass ball after cooling. The expansion of the universe at the moment of birth took place in all directions and rapidly, and its temperature decreased rapidly. A trillionth of a second after the explosion, the universe was small enough to fit in the palm of your hand. In a fraction of a second after the Big Bang, it had grown to the size of Mars, and the expansion continued. In the first moments after the Big Bang, the universe was steadily expanding. In those moments, there was no matter and the universe consisted of only energy. In this equation, mass, matter, and energy are related to each other. In other words, mass and energy are not separate from each other. Scientists made atomic bomb with the help of this equation. Also, with the help of this equation, we can understand how the first matter in the world was created. When an atom bomb explodes, a small amount of matter is destroyed and converted into energy. In the newborn universe, the opposite happened. Pure energy was transformed into material particles. But here there was a problem. He created the universe, matter and antimatter. These two are destroyed after interacting with each other. The early universe was like a war zone between matter and antimatter. If matter and antimatter were destroyed after interacting with each other, the universe would remain full of energy. Therefore, galaxies, stars, planets, and life did not exist. As a result, we were lucky in that respect. For every 100 million antimatter formed, 101 million matter particles were formed. This one remaining particle of matter in each volume was enough to form anything in the universe. For many years, cosmologists have researched how the early universe was structured. Now, in one of the largest laboratories in the world, scientists are trying to simulate conditions similar to the initial moments after the Big Bang. To do this, they increase the speed of subatomic particles to a speed close to the speed of light. Then, these particles collide with each other. Considerable heat energy is produced by the collision of these particles with each other. Scientists reached a very interesting result by carefully examining the collision of these particles with each other. After the collision and significant increase in temperature, a new state of matter appears. The appearance of this new material calls into question previous theories about the nature of the early universe. According to the proposed theories, the early universe was made of gas. But the new findings showed that the early universe was in liquid form and its initial temperature was 100 million times the temperature of the sun's surface. Its energy was so high that the particles vibrated unfettered at a very high speed. There was no friction and the liquid flowed easily. Even the viscosity of this liquid was zero, a phenomenon that is not observed now. The primordial ideal liquid was highly turbulent and consisted of a large number of subatomic particles that continuously collided with each other and produced energy. We should know that if the speed of these subatomic particles did not decrease, they would not connect with each other and no atom would be formed. The age of the universe has now reached one millionth of a second and its size is eight times that of the solar system. A little of the initial chaos has been reduced and there is a relative calm. After three minutes, the expanding universe has cooled enough. Protons and neutrons have bonded with each other and the first atomic nuclei, hydrogen and helium, 
are formed. These atoms are not complete because the vital part, the electron, is missing in them. In the hot early universe, there were lots of electrons, but they were moving too fast to form bonds with the formed nuclei. This state continued for hundreds of thousands of years, 